In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In my early years of growing up, there were a number of aspects of family life that were always expected. They were always around. With very few exceptions, we went to church every week. And when we were in church, if the hymnal called for ten stanzas to be sung, we sang all ten stanzas, and we liked it. Not only that, but my parents also sent my siblings and me to Sunday school every week. Then, of course, thankfully, we were able to have dinner together as a family most evenings, and before bedtime, we would pray together the Lord's Prayer. These are all wonderful and commendable activities for every family, and this is the ideal way for parents, especially of young children, to set a schedule something like this when possible and follow it throughout the years. But in addition to these regular patterns and occurrences, there was also always a good number of far side cartoon books available to be picked up and enjoyed. My dad had a particular liking for these and usually received a different one every year on Father's Day. And with all of these lying around, I remember seeing my oldest sister reading some of them and then talking about the comics she saw in them with my dad. And as I saw that, I wanted to do the same. So one day, when I was probably four or five years old, I asked him if I could. And his response was as fitting as it was correct. He told me, sure, you can do that, but you can't read, so it probably won't make much sense. Timing is an important factor as we grow up and learn. And there are subjects and experiences that we are not always ready to face or understand. In these weeks of the Easter season, we see examples of this in Jesus' interaction with His apostles, but also in the timing leading up to His departure from them. He says to them, But now I am going to Him who sent me. And none of you asks, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When Jesus said this, he was preparing the men closest to him for his upcoming death by crucifixion. He knew what was waiting for him, but he also knew that they could not process or accept it. He knew that they would wrestle with these upcoming facts from history before they were history, and that they would try to figure out a way for them to not actually take place. He knew this because he knows that faith is not a human work, and that in fact it is a gift that comes through his word. He told the men who followed him for roughly three years to recognize that he came here to live as the perfect sacrifice for those who loved themselves more than they loved him. And yet these men were saddened by these words, and they weren't able to understand all that he was saying. This was a problem for those who were very close to Jesus, and this is a problem for us today, who also consider ourselves close to Jesus. And everyone who wants to think that nothing can come between themselves and their love for the Lord does well to look closely at this lesson for this morning and also at all of God's Word. Jesus Christ offers us an incredibly close connection unto Himself right here at the altar each week in Holy Communion, and before that, of course, at the font of Holy Baptism. But instead, in our sin, we want to think that we know better. We want to think that we can go about our lives and find ourselves in the comforts of what this world offers. This way of living is not what He calls us to today, and it is not what He has to say to any of us in His Word at any point on any day. He knows that we need outside assistance, and He speaks of it. He promises to send a helper as we face these and all temptations. He speaks to His apostles, when the helper comes, 
He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. These are pointed and direct words. These are words that explain so much to each of us. These are words that show us that we are given to wrestle with the realities of our human flesh, which aims to kill us and damn us. These are words that point also to the promise delivered to us in holy baptism, which saves us as we lean on it in wrestling with our sin to the point of killing and drowning that sin through daily contrition and repentance. The temptation to consider ourselves stronger or higher or more knowledgeable than the one who creates us and guides us and helps us is quite strong. And we are mistaken if we fall into this trap. And then Jesus tells them, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Each of us does well to examine this statement from our Lord and to see how it applies to our lives. It is tempting to make a home to the idea that God doesn't know what we ourselves are dealing with. It's tempting to think that He is oblivious to what we are facing. It's tempting to think that perhaps somehow He doesn't understand it or He's not seeing our struggles or our pain or our suffering, and He leaves us alone to struggle with it on our own. But He has this to say if we find ourselves unable to bear what is before us. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is Mine. Therefore I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. Jesus Christ offers the Spirit to come alongside His people and to assure us always that we are not alone. There are many times when we cannot carry the weight or the guilt of our sin or handle the ways that this wicked world presses in on us. And this is why we need the Helper, just as the apostles did. He meets us here in His church and through His means of grace. He calls us also to model the help that He brings us with those around us in need. The Spirit points to the Son, and the Son carries the weight of our sin, and He offers us rest. And that is precisely what is delivered to us right here, week in and week out, in the divine service. When we are overwhelmed, which happens to us all, we do well to turn to the Helper and the ways He interacts with us in word and sacrament, with His gifts of forgiveness and strength and faith. As I made my way through that cartoon book, one of them in particular stood out to me, and I can still picture it in my mind. It was a cartoon drawing of a, the back of a cat standing in front of what looked like a gumball machine. But instead of candy, this machine was full of mice. The cat had clearly just put in money, and this prompted one of the mice to begin to fall through the bottom and into the cat's waiting paws. The other mice in the machine all turn and look, and one of them points and announces, Randy's going down! It's funny now, but my dad was right. It didn't make much sense to me. And as I paged through that book, most of the others didn't either. In time, after I learned how to read, and as I continued to observe how life in this world functions, I came to appreciate that author's style of humor, as many others have as well. Well, the apostles were not able to bear everything Jesus had to say to them in the lead-up to his death, resurrection, and ascension. According to his good timing, however, he went on to send them the Holy Spirit, the Helper, and through him, these men were able to go forward. They were equipped with a faith strong enough to face even violent death, and they went out to the nations to make disciples by baptizing and teaching them. We who are alive today, we who believe today, 
have received also the Holy Spirit, and He moves us to live our lives in ways that bear witness to this faith, pointing the world around us to its sin and to its only Savior, Jesus Christ. There are plenty of aspects of our lives that we struggle to or simply cannot understand. And our Lord does not guarantee us an answer to every question we might ask, or does he, nor does He guarantee us that all that we go through will make sense at some point. He does, however, offer us all that we need in His Helper, the Holy Spirit, who speaks to us through His Word, and in the assurance that we are always in His care and receiving that ongoing help as we go where God promises to, be, to work and also to be found. Amen. We stand together and sing the offertory on page 192.